around the world, progress towards gender equality has been extraordinary, awe-inspiring, but at the same time, deeply disappointing and dispiriting. So why the mixed emotions? Because it is an incredibly mixed bag of outcomes. On the whole, it's been a slow and steady progress towards gender equality in so many countries. However, in some countries, that progress has stalled or we've seen a dangerous backslide. In the United States, some women are being denied access to reproductive health care. Girls in Afghanistan denied access to secondary education. Iranian women face the threat of violence daily. The, the regression of rights for these women is deeply distressing, and we stand in solidarity with women around the world fighting to make our society more equal. For me, these world events are also a reminder that progress is neither linear nor guaranteed. Unfortunately, the rights our mothers and grandmothers fought so hard for can be taken away if we do not actively and persistently fight for them. Here in Australia, with the change of government in May, there was a pivot, a pivot towards recognising the value of gender equality. This government has placed gender equality at the heart of what we do. It's, a, it's an approach that spans across the entire government and we have set ourselves an ambitious goal to make Australia one of the most gender equal countries in the world. And it's, an, and it's important to outline two of the critical policy decisions made by this government in just the first six months. From July next year, the childcare subsidy rates will lift for 96% of families using care. It's good for parents, mostly mothers, who are getting back into work. It's good for children because they have access to that great early education and it sets them up for life. And it's good for our economy by increasing productivity. And it was our single largest election commitment in our most recent budget. And we know women are, getting, are not getting a fair deal when it comes to pay. On average, a woman working full-time earns $263 less per week than a man working full-time. And the gender pay gap has remained around 14% for far too long. We must do better, and this government will do better. And that's why the Secure Jobs Better Pay Bill is so important. It goes directly to the core of the problem. It makes gender equity and job security an object of our industrial relations framework. It ensures the Fair Work Commission factors in gender equity when considering the minimum wage and changing awards. But it does much more than just change the function of the Commission. It gives workers in those highly feminised industries the ability to secure the benefits of enterprise bargaining. No longer should it be the case that female-dominated industries receive the minimum award rate and male heavy, heavy industries receive a better enterprise agreement. There's more to do, and we need to recognise the varying and sometimes more acute impact of gender inequality on Indigenous women, women from culturally diverse backgrounds, women with disabilities and older women. But this is a government that is starting to take those important steps. And it's not a coincidence that these significant changes have been made when we have for the first time in our country's history, a majority female federal government. Yeah. 54 of the 103 government senators and members of parliament are women. This is the most diverse government our country has ever had, yeah. which means it better reflects the communities in which we aim to represent. And that is significant because it means our policies are better for the community.